South Australia has an incredibly diverse coastal landscape. From rugged coastal cliffs to river estuaries, tidal sand flats, coastal dunes, and long sandy beaches. This landscape supports an equally diverse range of species, forming a complex and fragile ecosystem. Here in South Australia, the continued existence of many animal species, such as beach nesting birds and migratory shorebirds, is under critical threat from human activities. The use of off-road vehicles on our beaches is having an increasingly damaging impact on the breeding, feeding and roosting of many bird species which rely on these areas for their survival. With the increasing human population and more off-road vehicles on the beach, the threats to bird life have reached a crisis point. Angry Goolwa residents are calling for tougher penalties for hoon drivers decimating the pristine beach. They say four-wheel drives are ripping through the sand dunes and something must be done. Over the past four years, nearly 4,000 vehicles have been reported for driving on the sand dunes. But the security guards that patrol the beach have no authority to issue fines. Reckless and unsafe. That's how police have described the actions of a driver who was filmed racing along a beach at Wallaroo with eight children unrestrained in the back. The vehicle, one of three, driving dangerously close to young swimmers. Witnesses eventually stepping in to stop anyone from being hurt. The evidence is clear that unless we better regulate driving on the beach, populations of beach nesting birds and migratory shorebirds will suffer a great decline. The decisions made today are critical for the future. Irresponsible driving must be halted and effective solutions enforced. My name's John McGuire, I'm a four-wheel driver and I'm also an environmentalist. I've been working in the television industry for about 35 years. Uh, I'm always looking to improve my connection with nature and that's part of the reason I'm in a four-wheel drive. I think there's a lot of benefits for four-wheel driving and I've seen them over the years and certainly with my own family we've had some awesome experiences you know, exploring South Australia and Australia, and that just creates great memories for our family. I've also done that with other four-wheel drivers, and it's a way to get together, have some mateship, and create some memories. Four-wheel driving has been part of the Australian culture for many, many decades, driving on the beaches or in dunes or whatever in various four-wheel drive vehicles as they have evolved over the last 40, 50 years. But over the years, four-wheel drives have become more aggressive in the sense of their, how they're jacked up with like big fat tyres and more powerful, more readily accessible by a lot of the population, a lot more affordable, and there's a lot more people now too. So, so the, a lot of the areas where you can do four-wheel driving on the beaches is uh, being impacted a lot more by more people, more days, throughout the year.
coastal environment ecologically plays a really important role as a buffer to the mainland area. So if you've got dunes and a coastal stretch, that helps protect the mainland from erosion and also from storm events. You get high tides and you get uh, storm surges and things like that. So dune systems and, and good beach areas are really important. Uh, but also for a number of uh, native plant species too that hold the dunes together and uh, create a whole ecosystem. You know, also, you know, there's a whole bunch of macroinvertebrates and crustaceans that use the beach as well as the tides go in and out. Apart from the obviously habitat for a number of shorebirds, uh, migratory birds, so having a healthy coastal zone is absolutely crucial. In South Australia we have five resident shorebirds. So the hooded plover is a beautiful beach nesting bird. It's our, one of our small to medium um, resident shorebirds and you'll find it in uh, what we call high energy beaches so that's where it likes to spend its life and feed and nest and raise its chicks. Um, we also have another, our smallest resident shorebird actually called the red cap plover. They're a beautiful little shorebird which generally will be running along the beach that they like to save their energy so they don't do a lot of flying unless they have to. We also have oyster catchers. So we have two different species of oyster catchers in South Australia. We've got our pied oyster catchers, which are black and white with a big uh, orange bill and red legs, red orange legs, as well as the gorgeous sooty oyster catchers, which are all black. And then we also have another bird that we've been focusing um, conservation efforts on, which is the fairy tern. So it's our smallest tern species in South Australia. It's a threatened species, another beautiful bird, and um, it has a really small, sharp yellow bill. There is scientific evidence that vehicles can cause impacts to coastal bird communities. Um, there's direct crushing, so vehicles can um, actually crush the nests and the chicks on the beach. So the, you know, these eggs and chicks are really tiny and camouflage, so they're really hard to see even when you're walking on the beach, let alone when you're in a car. And in actual fact, um, a study along the Kurong Ocean Beach showed that 81% of nests were crushed by vehicles. Further research shows that on some beaches where there's a lot of vehicle activity, the, um, the soft sand gets quite rutted with all the vehicle tracks and it can actually make it quite difficult for a little chick that has to navigate from the back of the beach to the water's edge to feed. It can make it quite tricky for that bird to actually get there. And also the little chicks even rest in the wheel ruts, unfortunately. And then there's disturbance as well. Disturbance. They disturb the birds that are either resting, feeding um, or nesting. And so whenever you see birds on the beach, uh, it's, they're doing one of those three things. So any disturbance, whether it be four-wheel drive or motorbikes or people walking, dogs, whatever, it has a massive impact on these birds trying to live their lives out. And there's also research to show that um, vehicles can reduce the abundance and diversity of invertebrates in the sand. So that's the little bugs um, that the birds eat in the sand. So of course that affects their food supply and it means that there might be less available food for them in the sand. The impact of four-wheel drive vehicles, including off-road motorbikes, is immense on a coastal environment, beaches in particular. Uh, apart from the obviously the impacting of the sand by the large four-wheel drive tyres, particularly if they're driving at high watermark along the dunes, uh, that constantly eroding away the dunes. So when you get a high tide or strong winds, it takes away even more of the dune. So apart from high tides doing their natural erosion, the, it's also by four-wheel drives actually uh, it's speeding up that process.
Bird Life Australia's Beach Nesting Birds program started in 2006 um, and it works with many partners and volunteers to achieve a few aims. One of those aims being raising awareness about the beach nesting birds and what you can do to help them on the beach. Uh, other key aspects of the program are to train up uh, volunteers to actually monitor those birds, so to find the nests and the chicks and to see if they succeed and also to protect those nests and chicks. So we put up fences around nests and signs to let people know that they're actually there on the beach. And also chick signs and chick shelters and chick banners to let people know that chicks are on the beach when they're outside of that fenced area. We monitor the hooded plovers on our local beaches for about 10 or 11 years now. It's all part of the larger BirdLife Australia beach nesting bird scheme. We do this because we started walking on the beach and we'd see the birds and we'd see the chicks occasionally. And then two or three days later, we wouldn't see the chicks again. And so we realised that these birds are quite threatened. Uh, they have a very hard time trying to survive or coexist with us on the beaches. And uh, since we started doing the program and we started to, we originally started just monitoring the birds, but now we realise that they needed more, they needed management. And so uh, with that, as we started putting up fencings and signs and around nests and this sort of stuff, we've had a lot more success. We monitor a number of beaches in the Onkaparinga Council region and there are three beaches that um, have cars on the beach. Um, that's Moana, Aldinga and Selix Beach. Our involvement with the council, the Onkaparinga Council, who looks after all of our beaches, has been very good. Um, they supply a lot of the equipment that we use to fence the nests and signpost the things. We also get a lot of support from them into in helping to regulate vehicles and their access to these beaches. Um, and it's having a really a, a noticeable effect. You can see they've put up signs last year about asking people not to drive past the nests and quite a few vehicles got to that point, turned around and went back again. So um, yes, yeah, so the signage that they put up was extremely effective and we're very pleased with that. The main problem we do have on Boana and Aldinga in particular is that the birds nest on the, often on the pebble banks or on the soft sand at the very top of the beach. And these are areas where the cars really shouldn't be driving. Uh, at Moana, for example, there's a sign up saying that it's illegal to do so, but unfortunately they still do. And so this is an area where we would like to see a little bit more uh, enforcement of the regulations. Also to the um, speed limits. All of these, our beaches have a 10k speed limit. Uh, and this is always, unfortunately, very difficult to enforce by the council because it's actually a road and the police have to enforce that. So we do see a lot of people who, who don't adhere to the speed limits. And also Maldinga is closed over the winter time and we still get people driving on the beach when the beach is actually closed. And that's a, a real no-no. People like to access the beach to um, have a day at the beach. They can take all of their gear with them, their little sun shelters and barbecues and have a full day. People on the beach they bring an awful lot more stuff than they would otherwise. Uh, and amazingly, they leave a lot of it on the beach, um, particularly over the long weekend. The council has a day where they spend cleaning up Aldinga Beach after um, Australia Day because there's so much stuff left on them. It's whole, whole gazebos and stuff they found. Yeah, the major problem with people parking on the beaches is people parking near where the nests are. Uh, this can often disturb the birds, cause them to go away from the eggs. And if the vehicles stay there for any length of time, they won't come back again. And uh, of course, that's very bad news for the eggs. Either they get um, too hot, too cold, or are easily taken by predators. In the rural area, people are going down onto the beaches in four-wheel drives for the fun of four-wheel drive or the adventure, or they want to go fishing and they want to go to their fishing spot. So that's a different approach and often those beaches are a lot more difficult to drive on and you need a lot higher levels of four-wheel drive skill. But at the same time, those beaches still have beach nesting birds, shorebirds, migratory birds. And so some areas throughout certain times of the year, 
might need to have restrictions. Fifteen years ago, the Environment Department, in conjunction with BirdLife Australia, uh, called for volunteers to survey beaches for shorebirds. I was allocated Long Beach. But there are a lot of uh, migratory species, but the most important bird is one that nests locally. It's called a pied oyster catcher. It congregates in the late summer through autumn and back in 2012 there were 267 of them. There's more pied oyster catchers that congregate on that beach than most anywhere else in the world for that species. And the Environment Department have acknowledged in writing that it is a beach of world importance. Off-road vehicles are a real problem on Long Beach. Even though it is a national park, vehicles are permitted on the beach, but uh, the signs are ignored. It's the roots of the vegetation that stabilises the dunes. By continually driving along the dune base, um, any new regrowth is churned up and the dunes are continually destabilised. But the most damaging impact is in the intertidal zone. There's a species of cockle, the scientific name Anapala cycladia. It's a small cockle that the pied oyster catchers feed on. Back in when I first started doing surveys on the beach, I measured out a square metre and counted over 600 of these cockles in that square metre. But since then, the continual uh, driving of vehicles on that intertidal zone. They've compacted the sand and uh, really made damage those cockle beds and they're only a remnant of what was there 15 years ago. People have driven on beaches for generations but there's so many of us now whereas once a beach could recover from the damage it's not the case anymore. We are losing our natural heritage. Our grandchildren won't have any to enjoy. We're really lucky in South Australia to have migratory shorebirds visit our shores. Uh, we have over 20 species of migratory shorebirds. And these birds are ones that spend our summer month feeding here and resting and really trying to gain that fat stores and the energy they need to make their northern hemisphere migrations again. So they do this every year. So come our autumn, they'll leave sort of April and they'll, they'll migrate north to breed and then they'll come back here once their breeding has finished. So we really, really need to have our beaches safe for them to do what they need to in order to, to continue to make these migrations. Otherwise their populations will crash and we just won't have these birds anymore. Really what we need to be doing is giving them the space and, and as much um, time um, so that they can be feeding, 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 and then resting, resting, resting so they can put on that fat to be able to make their migrations. Otherwise they just won't be able to do it and that, that won't sustain their population. So each time a vehicle drives past or drives up to any of these migratory shorebirds, and some of them are really small, they may not even see them, they're causing them to fly when they normally wouldn't. Um, so if, if the birds are, are moving because a, a vehicle is too close, because the impending tide um, causes the vehicles to get closer to the birds than what would be optimal, and the birds are moving and relocating, that's an energy expenditure that is really quite crucial to them. And it may result in the birds not having enough fitness and energy and weight gain to actually successfully complete a migration.
Four wheel drives give you that sense of freedom of, I guess, getting back to nature. But a lot of people actually have the wrong attitude to four wheel driving and it can create a fair bit of home attitude. They only need really one person to drive through a nesting area and that whole nesting area is completely ruined. So it only needs one person and that's the problem. Hoon drivers obviously don't have any understanding of the impact they're having. And, and you know, driving through a sand hill can create damage that lasts for tens, you know, possibly longer years of erosion, and that creates downstream effects. So it's a complete lack of understanding and possibly intelligence. We don't tolerate hoon driving out on the streets. It's frowned against. Why would we tolerate it here in a fragile, unique, precious ecosystem? It's ridiculous and we can certainly, as four-wheel drivers, lift our game to call these people out. I think we really need to address whether it's appropriate now, in today's times, to actually have vehicles on beaches. The amount of vehicles uh, on beaches is increasing and it's come to such that capacity is no longer there. Beaches that I've seen with vehicles actually become car parks in the end. Um, but also we are now more aware than ever of the um, importance of a protection of habitat um, for wildlife and making the beaches safe not only for wildlife but also for people. Well, for 15 years, I have seen Long Beach being hammered. The signs are ignored. So what's the option? If we want to retain our, our natural wonders, what do we do? And my opinion is that we should look at what has been done in Victoria. Other states have uh, banned four-wheel driving on their beaches. Uh, for example, Victoria hasn't had four-wheel driving on its beaches for quite a number of years. In Victoria, we know that for decades now, vehicles have not been permitted to drive on the beaches, which is fabulous for the birds. It gives them that one less threat, that one less thing that they need to deal with to survive and to breed on the beaches and for the migratory shorebirds to feed in peace. There are other states that have uh, more of a permit system, so some of the beaches in Queensland and, and in New South Wales have permits that you need to obtain before you do drive on the beach. And I think that's fabulous because with the permit you often have some restrictions and some instructions on what you need to do and, and, and what you need to follow in order to drive on the beach. And you also need to have that displayed on your dash. I think a permit system is probably a fair option. Uh, I know some four-wheel drivers will be up in arms about it, but it's, it's a way forward that we can still use uh, the beaches, uh, but we just have to be a bit more controlled. Well, part of the solution is to uh, learn how to share the beach, essentially. So um, really our program is about raising awareness of these birds in the community. And we find that, you know, once we get a chance to show people the birds um, and explain more about their needs, then people are more than happy to try and work around them and help them out. I know that nobody wants to run over a small little fluffy chick on the beach, so we really need to take the time, if we are going to drive on the beach, to learn what's there, to follow any of the guidelines that might be set in place at that beach. Usually there are some signs before you enter a beach, where the council might have a lot of information on this. And we know that if you are to drive at, at low tide, you're giving the birds much more space on the beach to move and to feed and to do what they need to do. And also driving slowly. <laughs> as slowly as you can on the beach so that you can avoid disturbing the migratory shorebirds and causing them all to fly. Just avoid you know, running over any of those small chicks. Also, if you see a fenced area on the beach, um, don't park right up against it if possible. Um, you know, 20, 30 metres away would be great just to have a bit of a buffer away from that nest and give them a bit of space. Alternatively, if you are driving along the beach and you see a fenced nest or signs out, then you could, if you're happy to, choose to turn around and um, not drive past the area. We at BirdLife are doing some mapping to look at the high conservation areas where there are a lot of, say, hooded plovers or where migratory shorebirds like to spend the summer months. 
And so once we know those areas, we can look at perhaps temporary closures like they have done in the Coorong. I think it's finding the balance between ecological sustainability and recreational activity. It's finding a balance. I think we can do more to minimise damage. We need better education programs and uh, control measures in place on the site so that four-wheel drivers see these things as they come in. They have to be marketed to the demographic that's causing the damage so that they actually pay attention to what information is out there. But yeah, I think there's much more we can do.